everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial here on how to create um, some interesting graphics using Google Earth. So here we have Google Earth open to the, you know, the home page that you see whenever you open Google Earth. And uh, to import data, you just go to File, Import. Uh, generally, I find it's easiest to import data that's in a comma-separated value file. So here I have, I've chosen comma-separated value. Uh, you can choose a many, many other different uh, types of files to import, but today we're just going to do a CSV file. Uh, and I'm going to do this one. This is some data on perfluoroalkyl substances in fish that were measured in the Great Lakes area. So I click on that, and this opens this um, window. Our data is delimited, and it's comma delimited. So the program is smart enough to figure that out by the fact that you told it it was a CSV file. Um, but if it was a text file, you might have to make it space delimited or, or mess around with some of these other things. And you can see the format of our data here. Um, we have latitude and longitude, uh, different station IDs, the different species of fish, the state in which uh, the sample was collected, which lake, you know, which of the five great lakes. Um, and then we have some measurements of different chemicals, okay? So we've got uh, the perfluorooctanyl sulfate, we've got PFAS from textiles, PFAS from fluoropolymer manufacture, uh, PFAS that's related to the use of uh, aqueous film forming foams, which are used to fight fires, uh, and PFOSA, which is a metabolite of PFOS. So we've got different stuff in here, and you can see these are uh, these measurements are in terms of concentrations. I, I think they're in parts per billion or parts per million, I forget which. Uh, so all of this looks like it's correct, so I can just hit finish. And then this dialog box, box pops up that says, do you want to apply a style template? And this is the key thing here. You say, yes, I'd like to apply a style template. And this is where you can do all kinds of cool things. Okay, so for example, you could color code your points. I could um, co set color from a field, and the field could be, let's say I do it by species. So here's my species, and then each species would be a different color. Um, and so there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, set colors from field. You, we could use random colors if we wanted to. Uh, use a single color. I don't see the point of that. Or we could set colors from a field. If we choose species, then we might have different colors. We could start with um, red over here, and we could end up with blue. You know, just making some stuff up. So this would be the starting color would be red. Start color red. OK. And the end color might be blue. OK. That's, I don't know why that's not working. Blue, there we go. Okay, uh, so then we have a bunch of different gradations, um, and if we scroll down here, you can see it's got each species shown, and they have a different color associated with each species, and also showing you the number of species, the number of samples of that species. So um, there's Sander vitreous, there's 20 samples, 20 different fish samples that are of the Sander vitreous type. So that's one thing that we could do, and then if we hit OK, it's going to ask us to save this. And here's our data. We just have to click here, click check the box here so that our data will actually show up. And here it is. You know, again, it's all about the Great Lakes, at the, the United States side of the Great Lakes. And so here's our data points, uh, all with uh, color coded by fish species. Now, uh, we could uh, change some of the properties here style, color. But see how it says, the descendants of this folder do not share the same style. Click the button below if you want to force all descendants to share the same style. We could do that. Um, but when we do that, we're going to lose some of the cool stuff that we've done. And so to, as far as I can tell, uh, this is the real problem. You can change the symbol and stuff. Um, but as far as I can tell, there's no way to really change once, once you make the decisions about how you want these points to look, there's not really a good way to change it. Uh, the only thing to do is just re-import the data. And so that's the problem with, with Google Earth, right? Um, it's, not, uh, it's not entirely uh, user-friendly in that sense. But let's go through this again. So let's import our data one more time. Import 
is there a few fast fish data? Do you want to reload? Yes. Okay, so again, here's our fish data. Hit finish. Do you want to apply a style template? Yes. Create new template, because we already had one. We just saved one. So now it's going to ask us, do we want to create a new one? I'm going to say yes. Uh, and so let's say I want to color code these, uh, and I want to set a color field. And now maybe I'll, instead of doing different categories of fish species, maybe I'll do the concentration of PFOS here. So that's my set color field is PFOS. Uh, and then frequently when you're doing uh, a heat map of this kind, you might want to have, uh, you know, sorry, the, the lowest color might be green. So make that this color green, okay. And then the high, high concentrations might be in red, so make it red there. And so now our, our samples will be color coded. Low concentrations will be in green, high concentrations will be in red. And you can scroll down and you can see. Now it's giving you some choices here. Um, it's telling you what are the, and you can, oh, you can tell it how many buckets. So let's do a whole bunch of buckets. Do, let's do like 10 buckets. Uh, and if we can make this bigger, it would be nice. So our, our data is now color coded, but you notice most of the data has low concentrations because our data is log normally distributed. So most of our data, if we just hit OK here and just accept it's sort of, um, default uh, thing, we're going to get most of our data is going to be green and yellow and there's only a few samples that are going to be up here in the red color. Okay, so what we could do is we could manually change this. We could say one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So we're essentially creating a uh, log scale here, sixty-four. Sorry, that's too high. So now we have to go to fifty-nine. So our highest is about 75, so maybe we'll go to 60 here, 60, 50, and yeah, see, it's, it's not letting me put these out of order. So maybe I'll do 45 here and 50. And now you can see we have more of like a Gaussian, by, by using a log scale, we've transformed uh, uh, log data uh, log normal data into something more normal. So it's got almost like a Gaussian distribution where most of our samples will be here in the yellow colors. Uh, but anyway, the point is you can change all this stuff manually. Hit OK and save that. Yes, we want to replace it. Um, and now here's our data and it's color coded by higher, higher concentrations in hotter colors. So we could do that. We could change the symbol here. You know, the, this bullseye is maybe not the best symbol. We could change it. Um, but the point is that you can create these kinds of heat maps um, and you can do other stuff too. You can add labels, for example, um, all kinds of cool things that you can do. And again, it, it, this is pretty clunky compared to doing this in, for example, ArcGIS Pro, but ArcGIS Pro is incredibly expensive and not everybody has a site license for it. And so this is a good alternative. It's free. And I think it's easier than uh, using R, which we will also talk about. But you know, R requires that you understand how to use R. Uh, this, so I think that this is a way to do a, like a quick and dirty map to visualize your data. Maybe, maybe this is not publication quality, uh, but it's still pretty good. Good, good, quick and dirty map. So good way to do some good data visualizations with Google Earth Pro.